can never bear the weight of proving that Christianity is true or more true than any other worldview that's out there. Apologetics can't work. Why could not? Why couldn't apologetics work? If if we were just going to focus all of our time just on defending our faith, which defending our faith is something the Bible tells us we should do, it definitely has a role. But I could never win a city. I could never. I, right. I could never win a, a, anyone. I might be able to, to have them question their beliefs by me defending my faith and trying to answer some of their questions about my belief system, but I'll never win a substantial number of people using apologetics only. And the Bible lets us know why. It says the carnal mind is enmity against God in Romans. Well, you know what enmity means? Oh, <clears throat> Hatred, yeah, it's yeah. hatred, uh, out, outer, like, utmost hatred. So the carnal mind is hatred against God, and it's not, it, it's not, um, it, it can't conform to the law of God, it, it, it can't. So I'm not going to win anyone over, I'm not going to persuade anybody. And most of what we teach as witnessing in churches is really arguing. It's, it's here I'll give you an argument for our faith. Here's a scripture, or yeah, here's a bunch of scriptures whenever you meet with somebody and Jehovah's Witnesses argue with them. And you can't, you're not, I believe me, I've argued with a lot of them, argued with a bunch of different people. Um, and you're not going to win anybody with arguing with them because they're just as rooted in their belief system as you are in yours. And even with other Christian denominations, they'll have a, a handful of scriptures just like you will. And they'll have an argument, a defense of their faith. So we have to, we can't rely totally on apologetics. We can't rely completely on an argument. Um, there has to be more to it that persuades people than that. And what I would like for each individual to get to is in your own life, in your own um, circle of influence, I would like for you to develop the ability to Defend your faith, but also persuade others. That's the, if you could do anything. I think the number one thing I would like to do is to have the ability to persuade men. And Paul says, you know, he the Bible in in many instances in the New Testament talks about how Paul would dispute and argue and persuade men. He spent two years at the school of Tyrannus in what the Bible calls Asia. Which is not modern day Asia, it would be like Turkey. <coughs> they called Turkey Asia, it was Asia Minor. Um, he spent two years there, daily, the Bible says, arguing and disputing um, with people who had come to him with, with their arguments. And he would stay there from sun up to sun down, just persuading people, showing them in the scripture how that Jesus was the Christ, and using the Bible. But even beyond that, he used the law, and we show many, the Bible has many instances again of when Paul would just use the law and he would awaken the conscience of man. And that's the most powerful tool that we've got, is the conscience of man. It's, um, it's kind of like a story, I think there's a story in the Bible where men are coming against um, Jezebel. <clears throat> Jezebel was a very powerful woman. In the Old Testament, um, prophets were afraid of her. Um, in fact, the Bible says that the prophet of God would hide in caves, and he was afraid of Jezebel because she hated him, and he knew that she wanted to kill him. Well, so these men go to the city that she's staying at in order to kill her, and they arrive at the gates, and they can't get through the gates. So what do they do? You guys, have you guys ever heard this story? When, when Jezebel died? Or yeah, they, 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 they said. She they said. Out the window and the dogs. Yeah, the prophecy was the dogs will eat your flesh in the gates of this city by the end of the, by the, end of the day. And they're like, you're crazy. Well, they go to the gates and they yell out a famous statement. Who is on the Lord's side? Who is on the Lord's side? The Lord's side? <clears throat> and they finally get somebody up there that's on the Lord's side and they push her out the window and they open the gates so that the people can get in and fight this battle for the forces of good, basically. And that whenever you approach someone and you're trying to persuade them of your belief system, you have you have the same uh, friend behind enemy lines that those guys have. 
you have an ally, you can't get past the wall on your own. So a lot of people have a really high wall built up against the things of God. They've either been hurt by somebody, um, they've seen hypocrisy in the church, so they turn to agnosticism or atheism or anything else because they have something that could not be explained. There was an inconsistency. Uh, do you guys know how Karl Marx became Karl Marx? Karl Marx invented socialism, which is what modern day communism and pretty much every evil regime on earth is based on, it's based in Marxism. Um, do you guys know how Karl Marx became Karl Marx? Yeah. You're in this story, you never heard of Karl Marx? You never heard of Karl Marx? History class, hello. I have history right now, but I never heard of it. Karl Marx, wow. You've heard of Marxism, right? No. <laughs> you guys have never heard of Marxism? No. Socialism? A lot of people, if you read, a, if you read of, uh, anything in history, it's not World War II, <laughs> they usually perceive World War II with talking about that. Oh, that's appalling. Wow. That's appalling. <laughs> Look up Karl Marx with a K, Karl with a K. What is that his kid? M A R X. Huh? Yeah. I, I remember. They were they were Orthodox Jews, um, whenever he was a child, and they moved to um, what modern day Russia, um, and his father came home one day um, after living his entire life as an Orthodox Jew. His father came home one day and said uh, to his family. From this moment on, we're no longer Orthodox Jews because we're persecuted as Jews, and I think our, my business could make more money if I stopped being a Jew and conformed to um, what everyone else is and lay down our beliefs in uh, God, basically, in the Old Testament. And that so profoundly affected Karl Marx that. He, he coined the phrase, he's known for the phrase that religion is the opiate of the masses. So religion must be destroyed. Because religion is what deceives us all and keeps us from really perfecting ourselves as a human race. Um, we rely on religion so much instead of taking responsibility um, and government will replace religion. But that was his, his goal in life, for government to replace religion as the sole provider for all mankind. Um, so he was transformed by hypocrisy in his own life. He was an Orthodox Jew, his dad comes home, we're not Jews anymore, and his father's ability to just give up everything that defined them as a people shook him to the very core of his person and it changed how he viewed any religion so that all of it must be false. If my father could give it up that easily, all of it must be phony and false. And that's a lot of people who have turned their back on God or, or do not believe in any religion at all. Something similar has happened in, in their life as well. Because now they just totally believe that everyone's a hypocrite. They don't believe anyone who... In fact, Christianity is portrayed really poorly on TV. Anyone who... Um, pretends like they're happy-go-lucky and like their life is all perfect. It's revealed that they're actually, you know, molesting children in their spare time or something. Like they're actually hiding something. Because no one lives a righteous moral lifestyle. No one. So TV constantly portrays Christians as, and, and they have plenty of evidence. I mean, there's a lot of, like that Ted Haggard. You guys know who Ted Haggard is? He's the head of the evangelicals of the United States. Like all the evangelical movements have a board or whatever that represents them. And these different denominations will elect these men. And he was the president of the evangelicals in, in America. And come to find out, he's been having a homosexual affair. This was like a few oh. years ago. <clears throat> he's been having a homosexual affair. He paid this male prostitute several times. He used drugs, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. And he was like always seen in public life as this great, moral, upright family man. Not so. He's been having this illicit <coughs> uh, Jimmy Swagger. And the list goes on and on. There are plenty of, of instances where that's been true. So now, in our culture, we're battling this uh, real skepticism of Christianity in the United States. There's a real skepticism of it. And 